Regina Luvan. Mr. Speaker, the government is flying blind when it comes to military aircraft procurement. The only way to ensure that we get the right plane at the best price is through an open competition. The Liberals promised that in the election, but now seem set to buy Super Hornets through a sole source deal. Yesterday at committee, senior defense officials confirmed that an open competition would be feasible and appropriate for fighter aircraft. Why hasn't the government started a transparent process to replace the CF-18s? As the minister has been saying for the entire week, Mr. Speaker, is that we are trying to manage the credibility gap and no decisions have been made. Therefore, the, questions, the, the question is based upon uh, gossip and rumour and, and uh, where else the, the honourable member gets his source of information. So, Mr. Speaker, at this point, no decision has been made, has been taken. For more on this, I'm joined in studio by NDP MP Aaron Weir and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Defence, John McKay, and opposition defence critic James Bazan joins us from Winnipeg. So, first question to you, Mr. McKay. Um, in the Liberal campaign book, you said we will not buy the F-35 stealth fighter bomb, but you also promised to launch an immediately an open and transparent competition. Where's the competition? Well, as you know, we inherited a bit of a mess, and, um, and the minister quickly determined, uh, which is maybe not any great insight, that we have to move on the replacement of the F-35 fairly smartly. So broken promise. So, nah, hang on. So uh, you're faced with some unhappy choices here. And the uh, first unhappy choice is uh, how are you going to get through the next few years and maintain your level of capability? And um, as you can see, the um, commitments of the uh, Canadian forces, uh, particularly the Air Force commitments, are not diminishing. In fact, the Russians are making intrusions into our air airspace at the same pace they were during the Cold War. So you've got, you got to deal with some realities here. So the, the question is, um, uh, you know, how are you going to deal with that interim measure and how are you going to deal with the long-term measure? Um, and at this point, um, we are attempting to manage that uh, capability gap um, and how that is going to be done is uh, yet to be uh, determined. Determined, uh, but it has, uh, how should we say, thrown a curve into the uh, commitment. Well, Mr. Bazan, let me ask you this because uh, w when he talks about Russia, for example, incursions in the north, everybody says that the F 35 stealth uh, is the better technology, better plane to deal with the Russians than the, the Hornet. Well, as you know, Bob, that both Norway and Denmark have recently had competitions uh, wide open and uh, the Super Hornet was not successful in either of those competitions and they both have gone with F-35s. But the big issue here is that the Liberals made one promise to have an open, fair and transparent competition. That's not going to happen. There are targeting sole sources, which they criticized us for doing when we were looking at the F-35, a contract that we never did sign because we actually set up a secretariat and an expert panel to go through and look at the capabilities that we require and what the Royal Canadian Air Force needs. Uh, that's not happening. What, what, what the Liberals are looking at is strictly political maneuvering. It's only about themselves. It's not about our men and women in uniform. It's not about protecting jobs here in Canada, uh, growing our aerospace industry, which is happening through the uh, F-35 consortium. And it's also uh, not respecting the taxpayer. We're, by not having an open and transparent competition, we don't know if we're getting the best value for the plane that they're ultimately going to buy. And of course, all the rumors are about sole source and of course Boeing has had unfettered access to uh, liberal ministers and their political staff where all the other competitors can't even get through the front door. So Mr. Rear, uh, Mr. McKay is right that the, con uh, the Conservatives didn't handle uh, the F-35 uh, purchase. We didn't have uh, an open and competitive process which we should have had from the beginning uh, but it's no excuse I would think for the, for the Liberals not doing uh, what they promised to do because everybody says if you don't have an open and fair competition Generally, taxpayers get ripped off. 
Well, I couldn't have said it uh, better myself. I mean, the Conservatives were engaged in this sole source uh, attempt to buy uh, F-35s. There were drawbacks with that aircraft. Costs were escalating. Now, it seems that the Liberals are set for a sole source deal uh, for Super Hornets. But really, the only way that we're going to get uh, the right aircraft at the best price is through an open competition where we thoroughly consider uh, all of the options. Uh, the Liberals promised that, and it's really unclear why they're not delivering on it. Uh, on Thursday at the Government Operations Committee, uh, we spoke to senior defense officials who confirmed that it's totally uh, feasible and appropriate to have an open competition uh, in acquiring uh, fighter aircraft. So, Mr. McKay, if you're looking at favoring uh, the Super Hornets, just yesterday in Aviation Magazine, the head of Boeing said, if I told you that I am and want to be a market leader in the fighter business, you would all tell me that I'm an idiot. Let's be clear, we lost the Joint Stealth Force fighter to uh, the Lockheed. She's saying that they don't have the, they're getting out of the fighter jet business. You're working on the presumption that we've foreclosed the notion of an open, transparent competition. As the defense people said at the committee, it's still doable. Uh, but we do also have to face a reality gap, or a, a, a gap in capability. And uh, the, the issue but, is... But the CF-18 is going to last for another day. Well, that's the, you see, this is what you find out when you come into government. You find out that the $450 million that the previous government had, uh, had spent on upgrading the, the, uh, the uh, F-18s to 2025, well, actually only 20 have been done. Well, that's uh, 20 out of a fleet of 77. So, you know, uh, we have uh, some, in, um, uh, and the rest are under sort of a feasibility analysis. Well, you know, a response to the Russians uh, and a Russian incursion is not feasibility analysis. You have to have a jet that's ready to, to uh, respond. Um, so the decision has not been taken. Um, gossip, rumor, and hearsay to the contrary. Um, we have not uh, moved on this. But uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Bazan. He said, oh, no decision is taken on whether we're going to have uh, an open competition, but why not just say we are going to have one because we promised that to Canadians in the election campaign? Exactly. They're, they're, they're double speaking and trying to mix the messages. And, you know, first and foremost, the capability gap is completely imaginary. We budgeted $400 million uh, that the department was starting to deliver on last fall uh, to actually upgrade the last of the planes so that they can extend their life uh, well into 2025. And not a single dollar and not a single contract has been awarded by the Liberals under that uh, budgetary item. So they are creating this capability gap rather than following through on what the RC CAF has said they need is which is to extend the life make sure that these planes last so we can make the proper decision and all they have to do now and if they move quickly and do just as as, as the Danes recently did is hold an open and fair uh, competition make sure that all the players are, are at play actually involve the RCAF not making these political decisions that they're doing right now uh, to, to you know fulfill a, a, a rather foolish campaign promise of not buying the F-35, but actually look at all the capabilities and all the prices, both acquisition and life cycle, and see which is the best aircraft for Canada. Mr. Rue, let me ask you about this. We've seen when there have been open competitions in Japan and in South Korea and in Denmark that the F-35 has ended up being the choice. It may, it may well be that if we had an open competition with the French and the, and the Europeans and the, and the Super Hornet, that in fact one of those other planes would, would get it rather than the F-35. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, Canada has some different defense requirements than some of the countries that you mentioned, so it's not obvious that mm -hmm. the F-35 would win a competition here, but that's the point of having an open competition, is to actually find out and make sure uh, that we make the best choice. One of the reasons that the Liberal government says it's still going to pay into the F-35 consortium, even though it just recently missed the payment, is to maintain industrial benefits uh, for Canada. But actually, that consortium doesn't guarantee any industrial benefits. It just includes Canada in the mix of countries that might or might not receive them. So I think that when we're negotiating these big deals, it's important to be very concrete and to really nail down specific benefits and uh, jobs for Canadians. And finally, Mr. McKay, when we, would we expect a decision one way or the other? Well, uh, the minister has said repeatedly, soon, 
Um, he's if if our position as our position is that there is a, a developing uh, capability gap that we have to manage uh, you have to move on this sooner rather than later and uh, so as a consequence um, we are faced with some uncomfortable decisions that need to be made these uh, decisions um, are in the in an active process and the cabinet is dealing with it so um, I don't know where we're kind of coming down here in terms of uh, you know how we have have precluded an open, fair, and transparent competition. I don't. I haven't read anything in any of the ministers. And in, in, uh, well, well, okay, it, the, it, the it, cabinet it, has just, to rule on just, this just, first. Yeah. Yeah. Just honor your campaign promise. We're having an open, fair well, competition. You know, like, That's but, but, simple. Uh, well, you know, Bob. Uh, no, the, the the point being that the cabinet has to come to ground, yeah. if you will. <laughs> not okay. to mix the metaphors yeah. that would be really bad come to ground on the decision uh, all right. process all right gentlemen so, I am sorry I have to go I've got it in my do now adjourn for Regina Louvain uh, thank you mr. speaker the uh, original question that prompts this adjournment debate was about the procurement of uh, f-35 uh, aircraft I think it's worth remembering that in the uh, last parliament it was the NDP that raised serious questions about the suitability of this aircraft uh, for Canada. So we proposed an open competition whereby different fighter aircraft could be compared. Uh, in the last election campaign, the Liberal Party latched onto this and committed not to buy the F-35 while at the same time holding an open competition. And Mr. Speaker, I think that was clearly very effective as political rhetoric, even though it's kind of a contradiction uh, to say there's an open competition uh, which excludes uh, one of the main uh, contenders uh, right off the bat. Then after the election, the uh, new government uh, paid millions of dollars to keep Canada in the F-35 consortium. So I asked, well, why would the government do that uh, if it wasn't planning to buy the aircraft? Since then, Mr. Speaker, Liberal policy has taken more sharp turns than a next-generation fighter aircraft. Uh, just a few days ago, it was reported that the government missed a payment to the F-35 consortium. Uh, it's proposing that it will continue to pay into the consortium, supposedly to receive industrial benefits, although I think it's important to note that the consortium doesn't guarantee any industrial benefits or jobs uh, to Canada. It simply has us in the mix of countries uh, that may or may not uh, receive such benefits. So it's not nearly as effective as actually negotiating specific and concrete uh, benefits as part uh, of, of an actual contract. Now, the sharper turn that's been taken uh, is the reported decision to buy uh, the Super Hornet through a sole source contract. Mr. Speaker, I just returned from a meeting of the Government Operations Committee uh, that concluded less than an hour ago, at which we were told by officials that, in fact, uh, no decision has been made, uh, that the government has not even provided any parameters uh, for the purchase of uh, new fighter aircraft, and indeed doesn't have any kind of a process in place uh, to replace uh, the CF-18. And I guess what I would say, Mr. Speaker, is that Whichever story one believes, what is clear is that the Liberals are not keeping their promise to run an open and transparent uh, competition uh, for these aircraft. Uh, if they've decided uh, to buy the Super Hornet through a sole source deal, that obviously isn't an open competition. If they haven't actually started any sort of tendering process or competition uh, in the seven months uh, since the election, uh, that's clearly a failure as well. So I would tend to uh, conclude where I began on the theme of having an open competition uh, to pick the aircraft that is going to best meet our uh, defense requirements while at the same time providing the best value uh, for Canadian taxpayers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, defense procurement has been shrouded uh, in, in secrecy. There have been all sorts of cost overruns associated with these sole source contracts. 
And I, I think it's very apparent that the only way to know that we're actually getting the best deal, the only way to make a proper evaluation of the different options is to have an open competition where we actually review those options uh, in a coherent way. Uh, so thanks very much uh, for the time, and I look uh, forward very much to hearing the government's response. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I appreciate your time and attention uh, on yet another uh, uh, jet replacement uh, speech. So uh, uh, it does seem to be issue du jour these days. Um, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his, uh, his inquiry. Um, the program that he references is actually a program that stretches back to 1997. It's a 19-year-old program, and during that time, the uh, Government of Canada, all governments of Canada, over the whatever number of governments have happened since 1997, has, uh, has invested something in the order of $309 million. And I urge my honourable colleague uh, to not read too much into the fact that uh, a quote-unquote payment was missed in the last day or two, uh, that payment will be made. Um, our uh, investment in this program represents about 2% of the non-recurring -recur cost, but it does keep us in uh, the uh, entire industrial mix with respect to um, uh, how uh, this uh, F-35 will ultimately be developed. Um, and as you know, uh, procurement tries to achieve three main objects, the one which the Honourable Member is referring to is leveraging the economic, industrial and technological benefits. So thus far the $300 plus million dollar investment has generated about $743 million worth of uh, industrial benefits uh, from a variety of, of companies who have developed an expertise over those 19 years. And Canada will continue to uh, meet its uh, obligations under a memorandum of understanding. The remaining in the remaining in the partnership, however, and this is an important point, the honourable member does not commit us to buy the F-35. So it's a case of being able to walk and chew gum. So we can participate in the program, but we're not obligated to actually purchase the uh, airplane. Um, the uh, Mr. Speaker, the debate has often been about replacing the uh, CF-18, uh, rather than what the brand of the CF-18 uh, should be, that this government is committed to replacing the uh, airplane. Interestingly, uh, Mr. Speaker, in 1982, um, the, uh, uh, we, we took the first delivery of the uh, CF-18s, and ironically, and the Honourable Member will appreciate this, that is also the year of his birth. So the uh, CF-18 is the only airplane that's been owned by the Government of Canada, the Defence Department, since he was born. And in 2003, they were set to retire by industry standards, and of course, they've undergone extensive structural repair. Now, I don't think the Honourable Member is in need of extensive structural repair, unlike these airplanes, um, but uh, we do anticipate that ultimately they will uh, uh, finish their life expectancy by 2025. Uh, the minister has been talking about the anticipated capability gap, and, and as the program unfolds, um, a number of the airplanes that, uh, of the 77 airplanes, a number of those airplanes will either not be able to uh, be refurbished, um, or the program might well be late, at which point the uh, number of of uh, airplanes available for operations, whether NORAD or NATO or, um, or uh, expeditionary operations, um, will be uh, stretched. And, and uh, we don't want to be stretched to the point where we actually do have a capability gap. And that is something that the Honourable Member and all the rest of us need to be concerned about. No decision has been made, and anything and any statement by anyone to the contrary is simply speculation. The government will inform uh, all as to when a decision is made and what form the, uh, pre replacement uh, the form of replacement of the jet will take. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Scarborough Guildwood uh, talked about a lot of things. He tried to guess uh, what year I was born. Uh, there's a few key things, though, uh, that he didn't tell us. Uh, he mentioned the fact that staying in the consortium uh, does not oblige Canada to buy. 
uh, F-35s. Uh, however, he didn't say that the government uh, wouldn't buy F-35s either, which of course was the Liberal Party's uh, election promise. Um, he did suggest that no decision had been made about which aircraft to buy, but he provided no explanation as to why the government has not even started uh, a competition process uh, to pick what aircraft it will buy. And if we want to have a good competition, we should allow as much time as possible, which means starting uh, as soon as possible. The member for Scarborough Guildwood also mentioned that he thought the CF-18s would be good until 2025. But that notion isn't really consistent with the government's claim that there's an urgent uh, capacity gap that needs to be filled by buying the Super Hornet right now. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm left with more questions than answers. Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Uh, it appears that um, the Honourable Member didn't quite understand what I was saying, so I'll give the opportunity, uh, take this opportunity to repeat it, Mr. Speaker. Um, the program, we can continue to participate in the program regardless of what the uh, replacement jet appears to be. Um, to assume that uh, there's been no work on how to decide the, uh, uh, the replacement process and what uh, ultimately might be the product of that replacement process is, is entirely an error um, and is an unwarranted presumption on his part. Um, this is a this is the, the agreed upon point. I hope the agreed upon point is that this jet needs to be replaced. That CF-18 needs to be replaced, um, so that we don't actually face a capability gap. And if the honourable member doesn't understand that 77 airplanes, uh, which is our present complement, will uh, start to uh, cease to have any uh, cease to have their capability then I don't know what else I can say to explain it to him that we are facing a capability gap and that needs to be addressed. Thank you.